done Luke Hobbs Auctioneer at Guitar Auctions at Gardner Holgate, uh, Caution Wiltshire UK. Um, we've got a huge guitar auction coming up next week on the 14th, 15th and 16th of June. It's a three day sale of guitars, amplifiers, effects, fares, audio equipment, memorabilia, artist associated guitars, um, anything guitar related. Um, it's a huge sale, it's our biggest ever sale. We've got over 1,600 lots going under the hammer, which is approximately 300 more than we ever have done. Um, so it's a huge event. Um, in this room, which is sale room number one, we have uh, just under 400 guitars, and we thought we'd take a look around so you can all see what's coming up next week. Um, this, the full catalogue is live online now, so you can go and view, register, and bid, you can bid online. Um, so you just have to go to auctions.gardenerholgate.co.uk or you can go to our um, sister site, guitar-auctions.co.uk, have a look at the catalogue, you can register to bid, you can bid during the auction itself, you can leave pre-bids, um, but you can also come down and see us in the room um, and bid, uh, be a floor bidder. So. Um, Always nice to do that, get some atmosphere in the room, but the uh, the online system is also um, a great way to do it as well. Um, in terms of public viewing, uh, we welcome you all next week um, from Monday morning, uh, Monday and Tuesday of next week. So we've got public viewing nine till five, um, and you'll also be able to pick up your copy of the catalog. Um, so a 120 page catalog filled with lots of goodies. Um, and a bit of a memento for the sale as well. So let's have a look around. Um, we, we're starting to sell a lot of Fender guitars this time actually. Um, so we've, we've managed to keep them together, which um, is something that we're working on doing is trying to keep brands together, which can be a bit difficult working in advance. Um, but we've got some great things coming up. Um, a lot of the guitars here are of what we call sort of less vulnerable guitars um, and then we've got a cabinet area at the back where we keep uh, vintage stock and you know higher profile stock um, just for ask ask to view basis um, but yeah so we start with a, like I said a, a big number of Fender guitars um, I will pick up I pick out a few things that I think are particularly um, cool things I guess it's all opinions but in my opinion, um, and some things that some of you may quite like. Um, this is quite an interesting guitar. Um, so it's a 1984 AVRI, so American Vintage uh, Strat, um, and one of the last guitars to be made in the Fullerton factory. So these have become quite collectible now. They've gone up in value considerably over recent years. Um, but it's a generally, it's a nice example. Um, there's Lots of checking on the finish there. Fiesta Red. There's a really early serial number as well. So yeah, 1984. Um, yeah, nice, nice example. 62 reissue. Um, being a being a bit of an 80s metal fan, um, this is a pretty cool <laughs> guitar. Um, and you really don't see many of these around at all. Um, so it's a HM Strat, uh, master built by John Cruz as well. Um, it's got the John Cruz signature on the back, obviously not making four Fender anymore, but it's a really, really good guitar, um, regardless of whether you're into that kind of thing or not. Um, Floyd Rose Trem, uh, Demarzio Humbucker, really, really flamey neck. What else do you need? What else do you need? <laughs> No, it's an amazing thing, and the condition's great too. And then we're working on down. We've got more, more Fender things. Oh, this is a. Uh, these are always really popular. So, Rosewood, Telecaster, full Rosewood, uh, 1996, made in Japan. This one. It's not one of the you know original early 60s ones that made famous, particularly by. George Harrison on the rooftop gig, but this is just an, I've never seen one in this good condition. I mean, it's even got the plastic still on the plate. Um, but this actually came in from a big collection of over a hundred guitars. Um, so yeah, and they, they had a lot of nice things and very clean and up together things. So 
um, had an eye for eye for perfection, I think. But yeah, it's a really good example. Certainly the best example I've ever seen. Um, sort of used market example. Um, and it's got the 50th anniversary badge just from that year. But a cool thing. And obviously quite heavy. And then again, more Fender guitars. And then we kind of work our way around to the cabinet area. So this is where we, like I mentioned earlier, we keep a lot of the um, valuable stock um, or things that we deem more vulnerable um, and need extra supervision. Um, the room's full, obviously fully supervised during the view, um, but I will head around there in a second um, and just give you, give you an idea of what we've got. Uh, we've got these two telecasters at the front here. Um, that are signed by Francis Rossi and Rick Parfit, guys from Status Quo. These are the signature models, uh, again, made in Japan, these ones. Um, so rare guitars, but also signed, um, they were signed by the, signed for the vendor, um, the seller, actually a local chap, um, at a Status Quo concert many years ago. Uh, this Telecaster here, um, this is a, this is an AVRI Telecaster in a rare sort of copper metallic finish. Um, but this guitar was actually used by the Edge of U2 in the um, the Vertigo video. So for it was for Apple Music. So you can't really see the guitar because it was a silhouette video. But you can see he was playing a Telecaster. But there is some provenance from Vincent Rare Guitars in London um, who state that they did loan the guitar out to um, U2 and the edge did use it and um, it went out without these scratches on top and came back with these scratches according to the letter of provenance so we've got some genuine edge wear there um, <laughs> nice <laughs> so, uh, yeah no it's, it's i mean it's a cool guitar in its own right and it's got a, it's got a bit of history so for the fans of u2 um that is a nice thing um but yeah i love the finish on that one um very lesser spotted um, in the cabinet here, I'll grab it out in a minute, but we've got a Selma Macca Ferry, 1932 this one was made. Um, we've actually got two in the cell, and I'll show you both of them. Um, one's significantly more valuable than the other, and I'll, um, I'll explain why shortly. <laughs> vintage guitars that come up in the auction. That's uh, so a 1967 Fender Mustang um, in the original blue finish. It's got its original case as well. Um, we've actually got a video demo of this on our YouTube channel. So um, do like and subscribe because we are constantly putting um, or trying to regularly put uh, demo videos. Uh, Jack Kendry's a great player. Um, so some decent 4K demos of, of the gear coming up. Um, and there's a really, really good video showing off this guitar. Um, but this is in, I mean, it's in good, honest condition. Um, lack of checking a few dings and marks, but all parts original. It's even got some kind of cigarette burn on the back, just adding to the history of the guitar. There'll be a story behind that, I'm sure. Uh, but it's got the original case as well, which is lovely. Um, and other things on the front here, um, Stefan de Pergo Strat there, um, boutique maker who makes very, very good Fender type guitars. We've got an Epiphone Sorrento. This is this has got to be a pick of the sale. And I think in terms of investment potential, I think Epiphone is still, I mean, they are they are going up in value, but I think they're still really underrated. I mean, this is a this is an incredible guitar, and when you compare it to its Gibson equi equivalent, you just think, actually, this is this is just as good. 
it's got a few minor condition things going on. I mean, the knobs have been changed and the tuners are later. Um, one of the wings on the head has been repaired. But it's a good, honest example. Royal Olive finish, so it's a really cool finish as well. Nice and lightweight, really resonant. Um, not quite in tune, but I don't think they will all be. I'm not taking the blame for that one. <laughs> <laughs> this will be another popular guitar. It's a Gibson Custom Standard V. So it's got sort of the Les Paul standard spec with the four control knobs and the flame top finish. Um, so it's a limited run that Gibson did. But it's a really good condition, original case. One very careful owner um, who had some very, very nice guitars, including this one. Um, but that will be that'll be one that will do very well in the sale and it's been quite popular, as you can imagine. Got a lot of very nice high-end acoustics in this cell as well. Um, we've got Martin OM42. It's a fairly modern one, but uh, yeah, really, really nice guitar. Um, the 42 appointments of all the abalone inlay. Um, really high-end guitar, stunning guitar. And we've got a Gallagher Doc Watson, um, a US Luthier. Um, again, lovely instrument in great condition. Bit of lacquer imperfections in the back of the neck, but otherwise it's a lovely guitar, good to go. Rolling. Yeah, we've got a load of, um, a lot of great Les Pauls in this cell. Um, there's a Gary Moore signature uh, from 2001, and it's basically in brand new condition. Um, again, one careful owner from new. I think we've even got the original sales receipt um, from, I think, Coda Music. Um, I think that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. but it's um, yeah, amazing condition. These have gone up, in, yeah, they've these gone up a lot in value. Um, I mean, I've been selling guitars by auction for fifteen years now, and these have these have more than doubled in value. So, um, I think one piece of advice you know, uh, people always ask me what guitars are good investments. I think anything of an artist association, not necessarily owned by an artist, but anything of an artist association um, is always a good buy just because um, they tend to be made in limited numbers. They get discontinued um, or some of the Gibson custom things, for example, they're made in, you know, 100 pieces worldwide um, and they're just great investment potential. And if you look at some some of the guitars now, um, I mean, personally, I've bought a couple, a, a Tom DeLong Strat, for example. 300 pounds 10 years ago and they're worth i mean people are asking thousands for them now um even the even as i've got a squire um simon neil biffy clyro strat bought for 150 pounds and even they are sort of mid hundreds now so it's it's really really worth looking at the sort of this angle of the market if you're looking for good potential investments especially where some of the vintage pieces are so high now and unobtainable to some so just a quick tip for for those that are looking for investment pieces but things like these this tend to you know really go up in value um and seem to give a good return at least um and then probably one of the coolest les pauls of the sale is this 1970 les paul custom it's been stripped to natural so very mick ronson um original waffle back tuners most of the volutes gone which will please some um, but the pancake body, and this was originally black, so you can see some of the black dye still in the in the pancake there, um, in the centre seam. Uh, T top, original T top pickups, and it's actually not a bad weight. And it's not too heavy at all. So yeah, and there, nice example, good Les Paul custom. And then one of the coolest fenders we have in the cell is this 1963 Fender Esquire. It's had the usual 70s treatment of being stripped to natural. Um, some replaced knobs. Apparently the original owner was a radio engineer. Um, and he put these radio knobs on, so that's quite, quite a cool feature. Um, yeah, nice original guard. 
Brazilian rose were bored, really dark Brazilian rose were bored. Um, the pickup does need a rewind, and that's the only downside of this guitar, is you need, the pickup does need rewinding, it's completely dead. Um, got one replaced tuner, lower E, but otherwise it's, it's a cool thing. You don't see many of these Esquires around. So yeah, needs a needs a good loving home, but I'm sure there'll be lots of interest in that one. And coming around the back, um, another another rare or rareish Gibson Les Paul. This is the Ace Freely Custom, and it's actually a real one. I think I've been <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> It's an actual, real-life, real one. We see more fakes of these than I think any other guitar. I'd say in the last 10 years, I've probably been pre presented with 20 chips and Ace Freelies. Um, and they're, they're always obvious, um, but it is nice to, it is nice to get a real one. Um, so I've had... I've only had this would be only the second real one we've had, so I mean that is quite a difference, twenty fake to two real ones. Um but the fakes are obvious and the fakes are bad. Um but yeah, cool thing, really highly figured top. And there's a great image of this in the catalogue. Um I'm saying to the <laughs> photographer behind the camera now. <laughs> But no, seriously, a, a really good image in the catalogue of that one um, online as well. Um, we've got some really cool, um, we've actually got three. They're all beside each other. Excuse the strings on this one. I've literally just had this apart. Um, I've got to string that back up properly. Oh, you'll leave for me to do it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but these are all from um, the early 60s. So they are they're technically Les Pauls, um, but also SGs. So... I think there's always arguments about what the correct term is, but let's just call them Les Paul SGs. Um, this is probably the nicest of the bunch. This is a 1961 um, SG or Les Paul Junior, as they did not have the Les Paul shape there then. But the the condition of this is incredible. I mean, there's 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 basically no checking on it. Um, but it is the original finish. Um, yeah, amazing condition. It's got the original case. A uh, bit of bit of fading on the back of the neck from general play and a bit of UV fading to the front. But, um, yeah, no, it's an amazing example. And then we've also, from 1961, we have an SG Custom. And this is a triple path paint and applied for pickup guitar. This has been refinished. Um, and the pickup covers have been off. Either it was an aesthetic thing at some point, or they have been rewound. I mean, one of the two. Um, but yeah, nice, a nice, valuable guitar nonetheless. Um, you know, I mean, originals of these are sort of you know fifteen thousand these days. So um, even refinished, that should still bring a fairly substantial some um and you don't see many of them sideways vibrola yeah cool thing and then this one is from roughly 1964 again excuse the strings this this has had a lot of work though um it was originally um originally would have had a vibrola so it's been converted to stop bar this pickup is a replacement that's a modern gibson pickup um this is the original patent number pickup um, most of the electrics have been swapped out uh, later guard. There's a small route under the guard as well. Um, but you've got the Brazilian rosewood board. Nice dark Brazilian rosewood there. And then there's the man who did the resto work. So JD Guitars, worked very well known in the Midlands. Um, did a lot of work on this sort of guitar in the 70s, 80s. Um, and you... Yeah, no, it's, a, it's, it's still a cool thing, and player grade vintage, I think, is the term we use. Um, so a good a good way into the vintage market without, um, I mean, well, I say without breaking the bank, it was still 
set you back a few thousand, but um, you know, it's not up towards 10,000 that it would be if it was all original. And some more nice things. So we've got Collings. Um, yeah, nice Collings i35. Just in good condition. Um, lacquer checking basically from new. No, really, really good high-end guitar. And this is this is a great opportunity to grab one at a non non-retail price as well. I mean they're I mean what are they, seven seven thousand pounds I think they are retail now and Yeah, this one's know. in at like two to three, I yeah, think. Or got maybe two and a half, three, three and a half estimate. Um and yeah, three and a half plus plus the buyer's premium, twenty six point four percent we charge on top of hammer prices. So it could still come in at a a, a, a considerably good buy. Um I love Pelham Blue Gibsons, and there is a Murphy Lab, Gibson Custom Murphy Lab, it's SG. The first Murphy Lab you've had in, right? First Murphy Lab we've had in, because um, it's a, it's relatively, not relatively new, I mean, Murphy Lab, I mean, Tom Murphy's been, been around Gibson for ages, but the Murphy Lab thing came out a few years ago, and but this is the first one we've actually had in, um, but it's, uh, yeah, some significant checking there. And some more good Gibson custom things. Again, going back to the artist, uh, the artist associated Gibsons. Here's a, a Bonamassa gold top. Um, I don't think I need to tell anyone who Joe Bonamassa is, but this is number 21. Um, there we go on the back of the head. So this is in, yeah, great condition. Um, it's obviously got the wear and checking that it would have had out of the factory really really cool guitar though nice big neck i mean i'm a big fan of these big chunky necks um but it's basically based on bonamassa's 57 gold top um and then another guitar that i i can't believe how much these gone up in value is everyone should know who that is mr dave Grohl of the foo fighters i'm a big foo fighters fan myself um but yeah, this is um, yeah, these have gone up so much in value. I almost can't believe it. But um, again, made limited numbers with an artist association, and Foo Fighters are arguably one of the biggest rock bands on the planet right now. So again, Pelham Blue finish. The fretboard needs a bit of hydration. That's the only downside to this guitar is a very dehydrated fretboard. But the the seller admitted he's basically never played it, um, and he's. I don't think he's really. Wasn't it like it was a gift to him or something? I think it was a and gift it was just to the seller. Yeah. Kept out of the way for. Yeah. What like fifteen years? It was just stored for a long time. Um, How do you think the value of those would be affected by the? Well, they're supposed to be releasing a new one, aren't they? They are supposed to be, but I've, it's always difficult to tell what it would do. But I think you know. The early runs is like with anything. Oh, yeah, the, the early runs tend to tend to increase even more. Um, and we've got a Joe Walsh Tangerine Burst 1960 Les Paul, another Gibson custom thing. So this is NOS, so it's you know the new old stock style rather than the aged. Um, number 53 in the run, also made in limited numbers. Certainly, I can't remember exactly, but it's certainly less than 300. Um, but yeah, another good guitar. It's got the case the, and the candy, as they say. Um, and then some basses, some cool basses. So we've got a 66 jazz bass. See where it's faded to the front, some tan lines. It's had a nice day at the beach. Yeah. But yeah, it's a cool thing. And then we've got a 1968 Precision Bass, which is in refinished in Fiesta Red. But I think the finish looks, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not an original finish. And it's obviously not an original finish, but it still looks, still looks the part. I mean, no one's going to know from a, from a distance. And I guess some would say, who cares? 
still a cool thing, still a cool playing bass. Um, yeah, nice, nice wear on the neck, so it's yeah got a really good feel to it. Um, this is, um, I think we're going into extreme player grade ter territory with this next one. Um, so this is a 1962, so we've got a slab board, 62 um, Fender Stratocaster. And I'm sure all of you will be um, trying to spot all the things that aren't original now. So, I mean, first of all, I think that is the worst decal I've ever seen on a guitar in my life. <laughs> Maybe not the worst decal I've ever seen on the guitar in my life, but the worst repro decal, I think. I was um, going to say, we've definitely had some questionable, spurious. Yeah, definitely. But um, so replace tuners, um, refinish body in some kind of poly finish. Um, but it is, or it certainly appears to be from the cavities inside, appears to be a, you know, a real body. Um, 62 stamp neck, um, early 62, so slab board. Um, original plate with the serial number. And... Yeah, internally, I mean, there's there's all sorts going on later bridge, but um, yeah, so it's instead of having to spend twenty grand plus on an original sixty two, you could get a sixty two strap for less than five k. So, um, as we say, players grade condition. Um, then we have a guitar, a Gibson Les Paul custom reissue, signed by. Noel Rogers um, and Little Stephen as well. Um, this was also owned by Noel Rogers, so another artist owned guitar. Um, that was that actually was sold in Christie's in Noel Rogers' own sale. Um, so it's got great provenance, um, you know, immaculate provenance really. But that is a guitar that was owned by Noel Rogers. Uh, Fender Custom Shop guitars, um, some really really nice things. Um, I guess we'll start with this one, um, Burgundy Mist Finish. This was this is a really early John Cruz master built guitar, um, and if you look at the serial number, by serial number it's technically the twenty first guitar he made as a master builder. So obviously he made a lot of Fender guitars before this, but this is this is his twenty first as a master builder. So a cool together. thing, nineteen sixty relic, and then we've also got another. 1960 relic of his and this one in sunburst i actually prefer this one um i don't know why I that's just... why we had to do the poll because i prefer the burgundy mist one yeah <laughs> but another really cool guitar this is and this is the 601st um john cruz master built guitar And a couple of rare JW Black, um, not not with Fender anymore again, but um, this is this is basically unique. You will not find another one. This is an Eric Clapton signature, um, which is specced up basically against Clapton's requirements. So I don't. It was it was something that Clapton didn't really want to happen, but um, JW Black went and did it anyway. Um, but really, really flamey maple neck on this one. Um, the 23rd guitar made by him. Um, really nice candy apple red finish with matching headstock and the gold hardware. So very bling, but it's a fantastic guitar. Um, and JW Black uh, custom shop guitars are, you know, have gone up quite a lot in value. Gone up quite a lot in value these days. Um, <laughs> This is a really nice, this is a 1973, I mean, it's, the condition is just ridiculously good on this one. It's got the original case, 1973 Lefty Telecaster. So, um, yeah, any lefties out there, This and you, you want a decent vintage guitar, um, early 70s, telly, oh, great condition. Yeah. I think the la one of the last places it came from was Norm's Rare Guitars. There is a Norm's Rare Guitars receipt in the case, I think, or certainly a shipping document related to. Um, and on the back here, we've got um, some artist-related guitars again. Um, 
This is one of my favourite guitars in the sale um, for various reasons. Firstly, it's a hardtail strap. I'm not a trem player or a trem fan by any means. Each to their own, but yeah, hardtail guitars are definitely um, my preference. But yeah, maple board, big headstock. I really like the 70s big headstocks. But this is a 1976 Strat. Um, like I said, hardtail, but this was owned by Chris Rea. So, um, really cool thing. It was used to record on his first two albums. Um, and there's footage of him using it live as well. It comes a great provenance as being sold on behalf of um, a chap called Dave Burton, who was in Chris Rea's band um, in the early years and recorded on those albums as well. Um, this is another one of Dave's guitars that this, but this was used I think just on one song by Chris Rea on, on his album, um, but it was Dave's main guitar, um, and he used this with Chris Rea. Um, so yeah, Les Paul Special from the 70s, mid-70s again. And then this Gretsch White Falcon, which... Again, nice blingy White Falcon, but 1975... And this was formerly owned by legendary French musician Johnny Halliday. Um, so those French music fans out there, John, Johnny Halliday was a huge name. Um, he was Mr. Rock and Roll in France, um, had a huge following, great musician, great performer. And he owned this guitar and then it actually went to Rick Parfit of Status Quo. So um, we're not sure whether... Johnny sold it to him or whether he gifted it to him. Apparently Johnny was quite well known for um, gifting his guitars to people. So they were they were quite friendly. We've got all the provenance and sort of uh, letters of provenance that all go with this. But um yeah, and then it and then it finally went to our vendor um from Rick Parfit, um, who had some association with the management of um of status quo. So yeah, really cool guitar with history. Um there's a picture of Johnny Halliday using a guitar from around the period he had this a Gretsch White Falcon which we believe is the same guitar but he has had quite a few White Falcons over the years um, he was a big big Gretsch player um, which you know I guess if you're if you're a rock and roller then it's the type of guitar you probably would play. As I mentioned earlier we've got two Selma McAfee guitars um, which is quite a thing in itself because the early ones, there's not many of them around at all, but we've got one that's significantly more valuable than the other one. And I think the obvious difference is this one has been heavily restored and this one is mostly original, but we'll have a look at, let's have a look at the original one first. So this one is from 1932. It's a really early serial number, nine, serial number 92, which is on the top there, which I don't think we're going to be able to get on the shot. But um, just about. if you can, well done, cameraman. <laughs> um, I don't think I did. <laughs> <laughs> but this is um, it's a good example. It's got a bit of restoration here. Um, you see the, the refinishing over the, the hairlines here. One really rare thing, um, a lot of these resonators got taken out and the branding on the back there you don't often see that you usually see an internal label um so this was well i guess it's thought that this was made under mario mcafeary's supervision um because he was only there during the, the the sort of the start of the production by selma um we got replaced tailpiece replaced bridge um everything else is pretty much there. Um, we've got a bit of we got a bit of a repair on the neck. Um, I think basically what happens is the the truss rods in these do oxidize, um, and some of the oxidization comes through and and um, creates damage on the neck. So we've got you can see the refinishing on the back of the neck, but otherwise it's I mean it's an amazing player. The action is probably a little bit too low um, for the sort of gypsy jazz style of music, um, but obviously that can be corrected. Um, but it's a really, really nice example and rare to see one. I mean, I've sold, I think I've only sold three or four in the last 15 years. Um, and yeah, they're good fun as well. Um, especially for 
those that can actually play that type of music, which I cannot, but it's very impressive. Um, yeah, no, really, really nice thing. And then put that one back. And as we say, this one was, um, this is from 1933, more likely, um, and it was restored by a Mr. Aylward, Aylward, in 2007. So from what we can make out, the fingerboard's been replaced, uh, the top logo's not original, the hardware looks okay in general. Um, and obviously it's all been refinished um but you know the asking price is half um but yeah i mean it is a, it is a shame that it's had sort of such restoration but then i guess it's it's a guitar that needed to be kept alive and given a new lease of life so um yeah like we said there's not many of them around um and yeah just to have two in the cell regardless is a is a nice thing it's probably quite easy for people to forget that, isn't it? That these are tools at the end of the day, they in a way. Tools. Yeah. And they need to be main, especially at like an age like that. They need to be maintained. They, they need to be maintained. They need to be played. Um, they shouldn't just be things kept behind a cabinet, which we're doing. But you know, we are we are looking after people's instruments at the end of the day. But yeah, no, they should they should be played. So we got a lot of really really good acoustics in this cell um just have a look at the catalog word search acoustic guitar a lot of nice martins but this is it's just an incredible thing um i don't think i will ever see one of these again um i mean i will see one again um i'll see a picture of one again i'm sure but um I don't think I'll ever have one of these in hand. If I do, I'm very, very lucky, but this is an Alcoa Martin. It's a 1928 0-28K, the K meaning Coa. Um, and it's an original, really nice, really early thing in great condition. Coa is very susceptible to cracking. Um, so to have one like this, there's a tiny little hairline there, but um, you know, it's not, it's not structurally, a major thing but we've got this really lovely tight tight spruce not spruce Go tight on. coa um more often see spruce on martins of course um but yeah no it's a it's a lovely thing um and a privilege to have and i think whoever ends up with this guitar let's just put value aside is not going to be disappointed um but yeah no it's um <laughs> Big, big sound for such a small guitar. Um, yeah, no, lovely. Just a final run through the cabinet area. We've got some memorabilia here, which we're not gonna cover too much, um, just because we'll keep this content more guitars, but we've got some cool memorabilia things. Um, but this is probably the highlight of the memorabilia sale. Um, it's probably the highlight of the sale, and uh, for, for some, certainly. But this is a 1989 Takamine acoustic guitar that was formerly owned by Pete Townsend. Um, it was kindly gifted to him, um, to a, a friend and acquaintance that had his guitar stolen. Um, so Pete had a, he had a few of this model um, and he basically let him pick one. Um, so this would have been, this would have been given to Pete during his endorsement of Takamine in the late 80s, early 90s. And this is the model he was most known for using live. Um, so quite interestingly, um, on, a, on a Who Gear website, it does state that there is one of these models and the whereabouts is unknown. And we do wonder whether it is this guitar. So we're not, we're not entirely sure what Pete used it for. We know that he has used it quite a lot. I mean, there's, there's a lot of wear on the frets there. Um, it was the the seller inherited this from his friend who was the person that got it off of Pete. Um, and we've got sort of emails from 
Pete and his his PA Nicola Joss um, just confirming the provenance. Um, but it what hasn't been really been used by the seller, and the seller has stated that his friend hardly used it as well. So, um, yeah, this wear has come from somewhere, and the most likely answer is it's come from Pete. Um, so yeah, really cool thing. One for who fa the who fans. And we got a pre-sale estimate of ten to twenty thousand on that. I mean, the guitar itself, as we know, is mid hundreds, the sort of intrinsic value. But um, artist association there. Um, there are pictures of Pete playing this model. We're not sure which ones may or may not be this guitar because we believe he had three or four of them at some point. But um, yeah, no, it's a it's a nice thing with great provenance. And. I don't think I can really ignore these guitars. Now, these these four guitars, they're not actually in this auction, but they are coming up in September. We have some incredible things already for September, but these are probably the highlights so far. So um, our cameraman there uh, focusing on the, uh, well, the first one that we've just seen um, on the screen there is a 1957 Fender Stratocaster which I'll, um, I'll just go and grab. So original case, but this guitar is completely original. Um, apart from the nut, the original nut is in pieces in the case, but yeah, everything else is completely dead straight. Um, it's It's got wear, so I can't really say go and find a better example because I'm sure there are lots of examples out there that are um, where the finish or in fact, I know there are where the finish is basically untouched, and um, but I think that's kind of like it's got the it's got the vibe. I think is the word. Um, it's got mojo. Um, so it's a, it's 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 been a loved guitar. Um, really good example. Fifty seven Strat. Um, one of the iconic years. Fifty seven and sixty two, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's a really really nice thing. Um, and then from the same seller. Um, who was a big Hank Marvin fan. This is a 61 Strat, so original case. Everything on this guitar is original, except for the finish. It's a pretty good refinish. Um, they certainly got all the undercoat correct. The biggest giveaway on this one was, um, I mean, the general patina didn't really feel right when we first looked at it. Uh, we're not far off, um, but, you know, just seeing enough of these things. But the biggest thing was the paint stick mark in the pocket um and the paint stick didn't really come until late 62 so that's kind of just well obviously just um secured the fact that it is a refinished guitar but it's a really really nice example though from 61 with the original case and then to go along with the lovely 57 Strat, we have a completely original 57 P base with an anodized guard. So again, this is coming up in September. I'll do, um later down the line, we'll do another video just covering these guitars in more detail. But a great example, original case. We've got the original tags, Fender polishing cloth for this one. So I think... Go and find one in better condition again you're going to be hard pushed there'll be some you know museum grade examples but that's um that's a lovely 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 thing and you know over 60 years old now so not not in bad condition for 60 years old and then just to the right there we've got a 1966 fender bass 5 so a rare thing, they didn't do them for that long. It wasn't really a model that took off, um, but it's got the original candy apple red reef, uh, not refinish, original candy apple red finish with matching headstock. So yeah, really, really cool thing. We're going back for some more Who related things. So um, the flight case is here, which housed this Sun Coliseum rig. So these were John Entwistle's and we think possibly, um, we certainly think this cabinet was probably used um, at Live Aid. Um, he had a big bank of these at Live Aid. Um, 
and quite often he would use these 412L cabinets. Um, so certainly the certainly the, one of the cabinets, um, but you know owned by John M. Whistle at, at some point. Um, but it's got the bespoke who flight cases. So I mean the flight cases are cool things in their own right. Um, so yeah, looking forward to offering them um, in the memorabilia section next next week. And then we've got a big run of Gibsons, as you'll see here. Um, we'll quickly brush over what we've got. We've, we've got three Slash Artist Collection guitars in in the three finishes that are related with Slash. Uh, so we've got the Appetite Burst, the Anaconda Burst, and the Vermilion Burst. Um, and they're all in great condition. Um, again, artist-related things that uh, uh, seem to be good investments. Um, and yeah, we've got, we've got all sorts all sorts of things. This is actually a really cool Les Paul studio. You don't often see these in the flip paint that you often see on cars. Um, but yeah, really cool Les Paul studio there. Great finish. Um, we've got quite a few Les Paul studios in this cell. Um, got an SG Supreme. It's a really flamey finish. That's in great condition. That's, that's from the same owner as the Flying V that we saw earlier. So he obviously liked his flamed sunburst finishes we got this vintage uh brand guitar and the reason we've put this in the gibson section is because we've got an original old gibson liar vibrola so um we thought it would look better and probably sell better within that section um but yeah all sorts of really nice gibsons uh es335 from 1983 in superb original condition some people don't like 80s era stuff but there's nothing wrong with it at all great instrument derek trucks sg um, a 61 reissue SG or Les Paul Junior, so it's quite it's quite interesting comparing the two the, with the ori original vintage one that we've got side by side. Gibson Sonex, not everyone's favourite guitar, but a good cheap way into the vintage Gibson thing. I mean, you can pick those up for mid hundreds, so it's um. Yeah, they are they are weighty, but um, yeah, they are they are nice things. And the workhorse guitar, as as we know them, um, this is the Gibson Les Paul Firebrand. Um, so we got original T top pickups. So really popular pickups there, but that's a, that's a cool thing. We got we had a minor headstock break on this one. So if you're um, if you're after, because I mean. It doesn't make any difference how it plays. Doesn't make any difference how it sounds. So if you're after a really really cool workhorse guitar um, and a vintage instrument that still has the potential to be a good investment, regardless of that minor neck issue, um, that would be a good option. You can see we do all sorts of models. Really good varied sale. Got a nice seventies uh, EV bass there as well. EB3, uh, 1972, and we know that because of the embossed pickup covers. Then after we finish with the Gibsons, we've got a good selection of uh, Martin acoustics. We've already covered the 28K in the cabinet, um, but we've got a lot of um, a lot of variation. We've got 12 strings um, as well, a nice little Hertz model Martin, so size five, um, really nice thing. <laughs> yeah, not in tune. Now the reason a lot of these guitars aren't in tune is because our photographer is quite particular, and he puts all the tuners straight on, just for aesthetic. So then by the time they come out, they're not in tune, and then we let our viewers go round. <laughs> Uh, when people are on public view, we let them go around and tune them all for us. So, um, yeah, that's why they're never in tune. Um, 
It's not because we don't know what we're doing, honest. <laughs> I think that would be the next thing to do. Just have a, literally spend a day going around tuning everything. Yeah. And then we just, we go into, after the Gibson and Fender section, we just go into pretty much everything. Um, so we've got a really, really, really cool Hofner. 505 base this is a rare thing 59 uh, you can tell by the pickups 59 model um needs a neck reset as most hofners do um but uh yeah no it's it's a lovely thing um and again you don't see many of those around in fact i think it's the first first one of that model we've ever had um more good things uh prs always have a few prs's in the cell a lot of you will be thinking what these polishing cloths are actually because they're getting quite prominent now but we do put these on the back of all the guitars to stop nitro burn from the stands because that can be a bit of an issue that um a bit of a tip there if you ever do buy these stands the rubber can burn into the nitro so always protect them um of course you get some stands that are that don't do that but um yeah these these rubber padded stands we just like to protect these guitars to make sure that they don't get get injured. Um, how can I not stop at this? <laughs> Mineric Inferno, which, um, yeah, it's not going to be for everyone, but apparently they uh, they were made to be chambered in a way that makes them like the perfect tonal guitar oh, something, or like, something the, like the um that. the shape of the flames that's it. is to do with how the body resonates that's or it. something yeah. something like that do we believe it i mean well that may have been the concept they went went for but um yeah interesting So lots of brands that are covered. We've got Epiphones, some more nice Hofners. This is a really cool guitar. Um, this is a first year 78 Hamer Sunburst and it's completely original with the original case. Um, again, the first Hamer Sunburst I think we've had. We've had quite a few good old Hamer guitars, but these are just incredible. Again, we've got a really good video of this up on our channel um again that jack's done for us so yeah really nice really nice guitar um really nice hoffner club 60 sort of a, a beatles association with that model in fairly good condition that one as well and then this is a this is a lovely national resophonic it's a cool thing from the 60s Original case, nice original condition. Yeah, you don't see many of these around. Nice bit of bit of fun, nice short scale body. Um, I guess you call it a good, a good armchair guitar, good vintage armchair guitar. Um, just to sit down and play if you're into the resonator thing. One of my favourite guitars. I I I love Les Paul Juniors. And this is um, by a French luthier known as, as you can see on the head there, Loic Le Pap. And these are metal bodied, so there's no resonance whatsoever acoustically, but this thing is a monster plugged in. Um, very similar to the James Trussart thing um, with the steel bodies with, with the wooden neck. Um, really, really well made. You don't really see these guitars that often. I think they used to be sold out of Macari's um, in London um, when they were based in London. Um, unfortunately, shut down now. Um, well, they they do still exist, just not in their in their London shop format. Uh, but yeah, no, this is um this is a really really cool thing. Some nice violin playing from upstairs. We we do sell violins, so we'll we'll have a quick spin around there up 
uh, a bit later. But yeah, that's a that's a really cool Les Paul Junior type guitar. I was looking on his website um when we were cataloging and there's some really cool stuff on that man yeah really cool <laughs> yes yeah do check out the website actually if you want to if you want um yeah just look at some really cool designs and concepts it's uh, it is a great website um really nice tailors um these are this is a cut these are custom custom tailors um so you won't really find many similar to this so again a nice koa example all koa body tight grain koa there Parkers, um, Paul Reed Smith, more Paul Reed Smiths. One of the most fun guitars in the cell, and it's not the most valuable. It's a Squire Bass 6. Yeah, a lot of fun to play, and they do not break the bank. Um, low hundreds, at least, anyway. So, yeah, no, good, good fun. Very inspirational, I think. You come up with some cool things with that guitar. Um, some more high end tailors. Some of you may look at this guitar and think Tony Zamatis. This is actually made by a British luthier called John DeGay, and he actually was very good friends of Tony Zamatis and he was given the blessing of the Zamatis family after Tony's passing to make guitars in his style but he actually used to help Tony with a lot of uh, luthier odd job luthier work on on his own guitars so um, some close Zamatis association there and we've got some good super strats Japanese made Ibanez RG Van Karina V with Gibson USA pickups. These are these are great, really lightweight, um, iconic looking. Uh, this is a Korean made 2002. So basically, just keep going around with all sorts of weird, wonderful, and standard things. Yeah, you can always be guaranteed there's a surprise. You can always find something <laughs> that is a surprise. The guitar that you never realised you wanted. I think a lot of people do actually come here with an idea of what they want to buy. They have a short list, they come and view and then they find something that they never knew they wanted and end up going home with something completely different. Um, it's a nice old K. These are really, really cool. Original Bigsby on there as well, which is worth a couple of hundred in its own right. Um, so, yeah, that's um, that's a cool thing. As you can see, more great things. An old Framus Atlantic guitar there. actually have um on the end of this table we've got some i guess wacky instruments um of different varieties so i'll start in the middle because this is a british thing broadway branded it's by no means the best guitar in the world it's quite crude but it is um it is a piece of british guitar history um, I have not seen many of them, um, but yeah, no, some, they have some, I think, unique charm to them. Um, and then either side, we've got a, uh, Tysco made, you know, Japanese Tysco, early Tysco guitar, four pickups. These pickups always sound great as well, actually. So if you, if, after some interesting tones, then. Um, something like that, but I think this is one of one of my favourite wacky guitars in the cell. Um, 
all the knobs, all the switches, individual switch for each pickup, um, and the controls. But yeah, this is um this is a cool thing. Apollo made in Japan. You've got change grover tuners there. The early early Japanese tuners weren't the most stable, so I can understand that modification. But this is um yeah this is a this is a cool thing something a bit different looks different totally different these are these are nice eighties Japanese made this one sheraton um so we but we see more of the nineties and two thousands Korean made Sheratons, but this is a Japanese one, so uh the quality is obviously a little bit better um and of course more collectible as well, but we don't see many of these at all. I probably sell two one or two Sheratons every single sale um I guess if you calculate that over 10 to 15 years, that's quite a few coming through. But I've only, this will be only the second Japanese one I've had. Um, yeah, nice, nice guitar. Got an early Selma amp box. There's a, it's actually upside down, but you can see there's a speaker there and you got the set there. For those Hawaiian steel players. Looking for a decent Les Paul style guitar. We've got these two Grecos. Um, 1976 there's the standard and then we got the custom one there I mean, from a distance when you're walking up to this guitar you you just think you would just think it's a Gibson uh, but this is from 1977 genuinely but, yeah genuinely <laughs> think it was a Gibson and it, the, the quality of it is is amazing um, and this is in really good condition that's actually come from, come from a collection of a chap who's got I think 600 guitars um, and we will be sort of selling his guitars over the over the coming years. It will be um, as he sort of uh, moves his collection on. So um, these are sort of two cool pieces from his collection. Um, we're big fans of Japanese guitars anyway, um, especially his Greco guitars. Superb quality, um, and yeah, nice to have two two really good examples from the same period of the standard and the custom. Bit of naughty branding there <laughs> Gibson but it's a quirky guitar um Indian made it's almost like a Gibson alternate reality or something Are they just stuck to doing metal guitars <laughs> <laughs> it's even got the original Indian label there Barrett Music House. Cool thing though. I really love these. This is a Yamaha SGV. Um, looks a bit like a banana. <laughs> but I especially think, in that yellow. Yeah, yeah, especially in this yellow. <laughs> But I think they are really, really cool, and they they sound cool as well. I mean, look at this big, big, big pickup. Um, yeah, but I've I've always always I've I've always liked these. I used to think that I wanted to own one. Um, maybe I will one day. But um, yeah, no, they are they are cool. They're different. And Chapman, Mister Rob Chapman. Um, who probably needs no introduction in the guitar community, um, but this is an ML3 Modern. In this very, very cool finish. Hardtail T-type. Um, a 
again, a, a re relatively inexpensive but very, very good guitar um, for any style, really, not just not just modern metal, but although that seems to be the way the way people approach them. And then we've got, we're getting to the end of this room now. Um, so we've got a, a really cool Squire Venus. Um, this is, this, this, in some ways, this is known as a signature model. It was um, Courtney Love. It was her thing that she did with Squire. Um, and yeah, made in 97 approximately. Um, but again, they didn't make many of them. Um, and they, again, because of the Artists Association and the rarity have sort of gone up in value. And again, another Artists Associated guitar is this J5, um, John 5 Fender Telecaster, uh, the triple, triple wide range pickups there. And they just announced a, a new signature? They have, mm -hmm. and the new signature looks amazing. Um, I think it's red, uh, no, red binding on the white body. Um, a really cool guitar. Um, that's a Japanese made Jaguar. Very, very good condition. Very, very well made guitars. As most Japanese guitars are, as most of you will know. More British guitar making history. Now, we always have a bit of a joke in this place that we'll get something rare in and then two will turn up at once. A bit like buses um <laughs> but yeah we had the weirdest thing with these is they both turned up on the same day literally within 10 minutes of each other and i can only recall ever having one other in the last 10 years um and yeah these two both turned up almost unexpectedly on the same day within 10 minutes of each other um so yeah that's just a these weird coincidences that happen. Um, <laughs> the yeah. amount of times. We've never had one of these before. Yeah. And then we'll have four on the next auction. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. If you've got a new Sonic, let's try and uh, let's try and get more than two in the next cell. And bring them all on the same day. Um, but yeah, good, good British guitar history there. And again, we're sort of getting to the end of the run here. Um, Tom Anderson, this is a really cool guitar. Tom Anderson. Instrument there. Makes a very, very good guitar. US Luthier. Good S-types, very well constructed. I think this one's from 2006. And it comes to these Road One, the Road One series, which I I love. I just think they they look they look good. Their necks, some of the nicest feeling necks, I think. Um, and I think you get a lot of guitar for the money with these. And these always these always fly out. Um, you almost can't get an, can't get enough of them. They're always really really popular. Uh, Mexican made. In the 2000s, this is from 2008. Yeah, really cool. 50s, rude one. I don't think we've ever had one that plays badly. No. They, they always just feel amazing. They're consistent. They always feel amazing. They always sound great. Um, and yeah, no wonder they're so popular. Really, really, really great guitars. If I had to buy a Strat in this cell, it would probably be that. One of the coolest things, um, just for scale. So the Jimi Hendrix, um, th this one was made in 94. So it's like the Jimi Hendrix spec limited edition head and two cabs that they bought out. Um, it's loud. We have plugged it in. We have played it. It did make the building rattle. <laughs> <laughs> um so we have we've attenuated it just to enjoy it a bit more and really crank it but um yeah no, it's, um, it's, a, it's a great thing it looks the part as well but i think 
Yeah. I think you'd annoy your neighbours. <laughs> so that ends room number one. Um, room number two, a lot of you will recognise the layout of this place, the, the regular customers, but we'll just go upstairs. And we had just under 400 guitars downstairs, but we've got a hell of a lot more up here. So this is our the our guitars that we have estimated values at under two two hundred pounds and under, um, sort of asking prices. So um, there's a lot up here, and we're not going to cover these too much. It's just a quick spin around to show you how extensive the sale is. All the amplifications up here as well. We don't know why we do it to ourselves, but we do. <laughs> All the amps up here. Um, because this is the only room we have for them. But um, yeah, we've got all sorts of amplifiers, um, some vintage marshals, a lot of good vintage marshals in this cell, um, high watts, fenders, a nice high watt custom 100. With original partridge transformers. With original partridge transformers, yeah. You always get asked, does it have the original Transformer? I guess it is important. Um, one of my favourite models is these JMP Mark II's master models. Great combos from the 70s. This is my favourite amp in the sale, I think, actually, is this um, Princeton Reverb. A really incredible sounding amp and fully working in very good working order. And if you do need attenuation for your big loud marshals, we've got a brand new Universal Audio amp Ox amp top box. And this is part of that joke where we were like, maybe we should get one. Yeah. And then two turned out. We have two in the sale. <laughs> sale our june 2023 auction that's taking place next week 14th 15th and 16th of june with public viewing on the 12th and 13th um, all sales start at 10 a.m and you can see the full listings on our website so auctions.gardenerholgate.co.uk where you can register and bid live and you can also go through our sister site guitar-auctions.co.uk and look at everything we have over 600 1600 lots going under the hammer um, and out of those 1,600 lots, there's over 700 guitars. So plenty to choose from, from all sorts of budgets, um, vintage, high-end, player's grade, uh, like I said, budget, mid-range guitars, amplifiers, pedals also. We didn't really cover any, many of the pedals, but we have around 200 pedals um, with some really, really rare things as well. Here's the catalogue. You can order this from the office. So if you'd like the physical catalogue, there it is, 120 pages of, um, well, it's like a magazine really, it's a, it's a thick thing. Um, so there we go. You can pick one of these up in person as well if you'd like to come down to the sale. So you can bid online or you can bid in person and we welcome you all to the sale room next week. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, we will try and do this every single sale, give you a tour around the sale room. We've got lots of other content on our channel, including video demos of some of the um, choice pieces um, that are very well demonstrated by Jack Kendrew, brilliant guitarist. Um, so please subscribe to our channel and you will see um, lots, lots more content in the future. So please remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.